How did you learn how to dress moves? Um, well, I'm a dominatrix. Um, <laughs> so I learned a lot about wound care in dungeons, quite honestly. It's Sunday at the Sidewalk Project, which is our busiest day. We work in Skid Row today. We work directly on the street with the houseless community. We will bring out 300 lunches. There's going to be hygiene kits. There's fem care kits. There's weed. We do a lot of work with sex workers as well. So we make sex worker kits, clean needles. We do condoms. We do um, safe smoking kits. This is also really important in the time of COVID. Having safe smoking supplies slows the spread of, of COVID. I think we're pretty much ready. Do we have fentanyl test strips? Yes, we do. Harm reduction is a set of policies and procedures to um, reduce the harm for people who use drugs, but it can also apply for sex workers. We think of it as a social justice movement. These are our syringe kits, and um, everything's in here. So we've got syringes, we've got water, we've got alcohol prep pads, we've got cookers, and then we've got little cottons. And then after you're done, you can put the used needles back in here and give them back to us, and then we dispose of them safely. They didn't have harm reduction when I was unhoused. There was nothing. I would sharpen needles with two pennies, like slide it up. I, you know, uh, so, so excessively unsafe. And that's what I, what I think it's so ridiculous when people say, if you give them the supplies they need to use safer, they're gonna use more. Let me just tell you, if you believe that, you don't understand addiction at all. If you think that is the deciding factor of whether someone is gonna continue using or not, as if they have the tools that they need to prevent HIV and abscesses and whatever, then you don't understand addiction at all and you should take a seat. We know that what we've been doing, it's been working, right? Like the areas that we've been consistently going back to over and over and over again and giving a lot of love, People have been, you know, the overdoses have been, they've been reversals, right? It's not deaths. But that some of the areas where we haven't been going to as much, we've been seeing deaths. And uh, Narcan is the life-saving medicine that brings people back from overdose. All right, we ready? <laughs> My friend, how are you? What do you want? Here's needles. You guys have Narcan? What do you need? What do you want, Mozzie? Oh, dog food? Here you go. How you guys doing? You need pipes today? See you next week. We're a little light on weed today. Okay. We have some friends who are farmers who donate to us. Weed is medicine. We've had um, people who, who uh, look forward to getting weed and they said it's helped their back pain, it's helped them sleep. There's another guy I met with pancreatic cancer. It's helped him a lot with his pain. So it is, uh, people are getting some, some relief from it. We know that it's effective. We can see that it is medicine in the lives of people who we're serving. You know, we've become so aware about how good cannabis is for so many things. Generations of trauma existing in one person, um, not to mention the trauma of living unhoused and a multitude of other things. Some people are used to us having it, and then some people are like, you're kidding me. You know, like, just floored that I just handed them, you know, a little bag of weed. I've been out here on Skid Row for the last 10 plus years, passing through, and I am determined to pass on through, but I enjoyed the resources and the services and the love and the people to come out and share their time, and I'm grateful and thankful. You know, they haven't been treated like human beings by many people. I um, mean, that, that's what sometimes it takes to, you know, to believe in yourself, is to have someone else believe in you first. You got hit by a car? Tiny bit infected, not too bad though. Did they stop after they hit you? No, they just kept going. This is my friend, Cookie. A couple months I've been coming yeah, to see you. For a while. Right now I'm doing his wound care, and I've been coming once a week. I'm a dominatrix, um, <laughs> so 
I learned a lot about wound care in dungeons, quite honestly. I'm not a nurse, I'm a harm reductionist. And, you know, I think it's really valuable to work from a lived experience perspective. But I've been homeless now here for, uh, what, three years now. It's, it's absolutely essential that uh, she dress my leg for the simple fact it is infected and uh, I'm not receiving adequate care from uh, an entity that I was evidently assigned to. They're not doing what they need to be doing. And so uh, it was necessary to seek out Miss Soma here, who is very professional in manner. As you can see, she's meticulous. She probably should have been in the military, like me. Hey, folks, hey. what's the hey. deal, Daddy-O? Man, from the face real bad to get your help. Where? My friend is asking us to come because someone's bleeding from their face, so we're gonna see what's happening. Hi there. I'm gonna help you. I know it hurts. We're gonna get through this together, okay? Do you have like dizziness or? Uh, I don't know. Just like a lot of pain. I really think it's a good idea for you to go to the hospital or to a clinic. He got hit and he hit the floor. Yeah, we did a quick little first aid on his head. But I mean, it, it's sort of, it's just what you do, right? You, you take care of people. I, I feel like it's a natural impulse to support people in your community. Here you go. You guys have a good day, okay? You want pipes? Straight? You want some lunch? Did we get everybody? Yeah. You want some lunch too? Like I'm formerly unhoused and a former person who used drugs and um, still a sex worker. And you know, some of our, our founders had similar stories, but you know, what we really found was that connection with other people and art and music, and really friendship was what promoted wellness and made us feel okay. And you know, my, my journey is a, a harm reduction journey. So we wanted to share that with other people. I mean, harm reduction in general is not just about people who use drugs. We also, you know, fight against the stigma around sex work, um, mental health issues. I'm a trauma recovery coach, so I bring in the trauma-informed care aspect. I was also a sex worker for many years, so for me it's like I understand, you know, what, what it's about and how we face so much judgment and I think it's important also to make a distinction between sex work and trafficking. Yes, trafficking is real, um, but so is the empowerment that a woman has to engage in sex work and take care of herself and to take care of, of you know, her financial needs, her physical, her health, all of it. Um, so we do bad date lists also, which um, just helps inform the women of any you know, men that might be driving around that are assaulting, raping, stealing money from, whatever it happens to be, um, to kind of empower them and keep them as safe as possible. I'm also a childhood sexual abuse survivor myself and a rape survivor, and I know sex is not inherently dangerous. Sex with strangers should not be inherently dangerous. Sex for money shouldn't be inherently dangerous. What makes it dangerous is the way that we view sex workers and then it, it feeds and bleeds off on the people how they view sex workers and then they believe that they should be violated. Because we stigmatize people who use drugs and we stigmatize sex workers so much, programs like ours <laughs> don't get funded in the same way as other programs. Um, you know, we need, we need funding and we need support, we need volunteers. Um, <laughs> We need government organizations to take us seriously. But you know, we need to be able to bring people closer to us and support people so that people aren't just dying in the streets. It's insane in an overdose epidemic that you know, we continue to just push people away and then criminalize and 
um, put people into cages. You know, it's, it, it, we've come so much further, you know, with 30 years of evidence behind what we're doing. So our organization hires people who are, um, who are unhoused or, and who are people who use drugs. And that's a very big part of what we do. So we believe that we, um, it's very important to lift people up from within the community. And that's the way to empower communities is partially, you know, it's like give people jobs, <laughs> you know, like give people housing, give people jobs, you know, and give people a voice.